I'm Maria Gillum Krakauer. I'm an assistant professor of neonatology at Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee. Module three, oxygen content. Goals for this module are for you to know the factors that affect oxygen content. And by the end of this module, I hope that you are able to demonstrate how to calculate oxygen content. Most of the oxygen in blood is carried by hemoglobin and a small part is dissolved in the blood. Together, their sum is the arterial oxygen content, or CaO2. Let's break down this equation. 1.34 is the amount in milliliters of oxygen bound to one gram of hemoglobin at 100% saturation. If you read around in the literature, you may see varying numbers used here. I've seen 1.34 and 1.39. 1.39 is the theoretical capacity of hemoglobin, but 1.34 is the measured capacity which is why we use that in this module. Hemoglobin is the hemoglobin concentration, which is generally presented in grams per deciliter or grams per 100 milliliters. SAO2 is the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin or the percentage of hemoglobin saturated with oxygen. And 0 0.003 is the solubility factor of oxygen in plasma in milliliters per milliliter of mercury. Note that the first part of the equation contributes more to the oxygen content than the PaO2, which is multiplied by the small solubility factor. This means that changes in hemoglobin or oxygen saturation will affect the oxygen content more than changes in PaO2. PaO2 reflects only the oxygen dissolved in the arterial blood plasma. If the child's hemoglobin is only 3 grams per deciliter, the PaO2 may be normal or high, but oxygen delivery to the tissues will still be inadequate. Because most oxygen is carried by hemoglobin in the red blood cells rather than the plasma, a hemoglobin of 3 grams per deciliter is inadequate to carry sufficient oxygen. In this case, the pulse oximeter may still reflect 100% saturation despite inadequate arterial oxygen content. Let's practice this calculation. Let's calculate oxygen content difference for two patients one with a hemoglobin of 15 and the other with a hemoglobin of 7. So the first patient has a hemoglobin of 15, a saturation of 100%, and a PaO2 of 100. We take 1.34, the amount of oxygen carried on a molecule of hemoglobin, multiply that times the hemoglobin of 15 in grams per deciliter, times the saturation of 100%, which needs to be divided by 100 to change it to a non-percent number. Take this and add to it the product of the solubility factor and the PaO2 of 100. Solving that, we get 20, which is the amount bound to hemoglobin, plus 0.3, or 20.3 milliliters of oxygen per deciliter of blood. Now, let's compare this to a patient with half the hemoglobin. We're going to keep the saturation and the PaO2 the same as the first patient. Product of the part of the equation of oxygen bound to hemoglobin is 9.38 and the product of the factors contributing to oxygen dissolved in the blood is 0.3. That part's just like the first patient. Adding these together, we get 9.38 milliliters of oxygen per deciliter of blood. This is half the oxygen content of the first patient. This demonstrates how crucial hemoglobin is to arterial oxygen content. In this module, we discussed oxygen content. You should now know the factors that affect the oxygen content and be able to demonstrate how to calculate the oxygen content. This concludes Module 3. Thank you for your attention.